right, well, we got another story here at Acoustic Sounds. They get crazier and crazier as the years go on. We, uh, we had a big collection we bought in Sherman, Texas about, I don't know, about five, six years ago. Maybe, Time maybe, flies, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that was like about eight budget trucks full of stuff. We called it the Texas Collection. I guess we could call this the Kansas Collection. We, uh, me and Stelly drove down a little town in Kansas and, and uh, it was just amazing. I mean, look, we got four of the spec four amps, two of the spec two, two preamps. Spec ones. Okay, spec ones. So the two spec ones preamps with four spec fours with the matching cassette deck that goes with it. And uh, Stelly, talk about the Marantz. The top yeah, piece. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a tube guy myself, but this was the first Marantz piece, uh, my understanding, also called the Model 1, the audio consulate. Um, and people use these for mono today because it's got extensive equalization for uh, phono curves for playing pretty much anything that's ever been cut to vinyl. Uh, and then having a pair of them for a stereo application with their little outboard power supplies. I'm not sure where they it's are, but thing. got the full set. And then some cool Marantz pieces that I'm not used to seeing. This uh, 3250 preamp and a B version of it. And I think, yeah, we two Marantz amps, which were probably used with these. An 1170 DC and an SM7, which I was... Uh, Kind of glad to see. I've never seen one before, but uh, kind of a neat unit. And then, other than the Pioneer, you had some of the Yamaha separates, a pair of the C4 M4 separates, uh, MX, what was that, a 1000 amp? And uh, yeah, more neat Pioneer. Stuff. What about that Oppo? The yeah, there were three Oppos in there, including a 205, which is highly desirable today. The stuff needs to be cleaned up. The house was pretty pretty much in disarray. Uh, and then these 9,800 integrateds from Pioneer. Uh, these things were highly class A biased. It's an AB amp, but they actually sound nice pretty good. Nice little Kenwood. Yeah, uh, the 8,300 matching KT and KA Tell integrated about tuner. The tables, the... Uh... Yeah, um, well, this guy was obviously a linear tracker. Um, everything, all the tables we got with the exception of the one radial arm JVC, is all straight line linear tracking turntables. This is the Yamaha. Yeah, they're PX2. First one I've ever seen. And then this is the uh, Reco Cut. These are four Empires with the Rabco arm. He had six of those Pioneer uh, linear tracking arms. Yeah, these were also marketed, I think, under the Phase Linear name as well. Yeah, they might even have been two different, like I think three different companies use that yeah one? Okay. yeah but i like these just for the wood bases i mean yeah. um i know ralph karsten with atmosphere does a real nice cnc and um another friend of mine mike uh Pichetto, audio engineering does a really nice restoration of these uh empires so look at these records so we got uh he had a bunch of records and uh so there's a dark side there's a in shrink wrap, the Mississippi John, uh, Mississippi Fred McDowell. He had two S9 Sheffield Labs. Early I used to stuff. get, I used to get over a thousand for these. So he had two S9s. One was in vinyl cover. Oh uh, yeah, in plastic. And then Hank Williams, see the I shrink like wrap, yeah. original of Merry Christmas. The this Massillator Lacid will just blow you away. He had two of those. Another blues record. And just come and look at these records. They're all in shrink with the, with the hype sticker. Art Garfunkel, Commander Cody, Raw Arverson, Jennifer Warrens. Look at the hype stickers. Sealed, powerful people. Hype sticker, Simon and Garfunkel. Hype wow. sticker, Simon and Garfunkel. The rumors. Dude, that's, those are two little pop audiophile jewels right there. Right, yeah. Christopher Cross hype. The credits on that are crazy. Linda Ronstadt, Carly Amy Simon, Lou. Emmy Lou, uh, Morris Simon and Garfunkel, Paul Simon. 
Lots of uh, Waylon Jennings. Wow. He liked the Montrose, Linda Ross, that oh, Buddy Holly. Sack. Just, I mean, it's it's rare to see this many records with with the hype stickers and uh, still in the shrink. Um, a lot of Willie Nelson. I love this Willie Nelson, man. This is a mm. great one. Merle Haggard, my man Merle. This is um, Merle Watson, Charlie Witch, a lot of Waylon Jennings, uh, Conway Twitty, more Waylon, America, Jay Giles, um, more Doc and Merle Watson. We left a lot of records. But yeah, they, yeah, we this, left. These are clean. We just wanted to mint. But I, I need to thank Stelly for... Coming down there, man. We we getting old, and it's been a long time since we worked that hard. And uh, the week, last weekend, Expona. Yeah, we just got back from Expona, and it's like, you know, loading that stuff in and out. But um, hey, man, you know, when you get a chance to, it's like a barnyard find, you know. Yeah, it was fun scavenger hunt. Scavenger. I mean, like, where are you gonna see this stuff? And I mean, this is only. He had uh, Altec Voices Theaters. He had a garage full of horns. He had about five times more than this right here. Maybe, well, you'll see in the video. But we just kind of cherry-picked the best, and now we got to clean it. So, dude, thanks, man. That means you owe me. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> I got home, and I told my wife about what me and Steli went through, and... and uh, she said, "She has she's Chinese. She has a little Chinese accent. She's, you, you been standing good? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, all right. She's, oh, I'm going to have to cook him some red beans and rice. You know he loves that. Looking forward to that. All right. Thanks. Thank you. expedite the, the removal of the equipment that was in, in abundance. Well, you're, you're in Jefferson City, Kansas, um, at my uncle's house. So basically my uncle passed last year, mm -hmm. and my aunt both in the same year. And um, my uncle was quite the collector. Yeah. As you guys have seen. Yeah, quite the collector. <laughs> so um, from what I understand, the story started about 1967 with his first stereo system, and he's been building it ever since until last January. And it appears that he never got rid of anything. He just kept adding to Actually, it. Actually, he traded and bartered a lot. Um, you're, there's a lot of like Macintosh equipment you guys there didn't even get to see that I know that he used for to get different, to acquire different pieces of wow. ears. Yeah, yeah that, that stuff was beautiful. Um, but yeah, this was, a fully functioning system of, uh, I think we were at 205 components plus all the speakers. I have no idea how many there were. Right. Um, total, but. So he was uh, listening to music to the very end? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, he pretty much lived in his audio room. Yeah, yeah. I see uh, we uh, went, through the, went through the room and saw where there was a lot of vinyl records there. Yeah. Was he primarily a vinyl guy? Um, he, he actually did try to evolve with time, but he loved his vinyl. Yeah. Um, he really did. Um, the laser disc was a big thing for him. 
I, I guess it had something to do with the audio quality. I, I don't know. I enjoyed getting to come here when I got the opportunity and listen to his system or watch a movie with him or, you know, do whatever. But uh -huh. yeah, it's some of my big memories from being a kid was his house, his house on Fifth Street and get to sit in the big chair right in the center of everything. Boy, he was way man. ahead of his time. He, yeah, probably. In gathering the equipment today in the garage, we found that there were these remarkably big Altec speakers yeah. and, and horns. Yeah. I bet you there's 30 horns in the truck. Yeah. Tell us about that. And how so those big speakers, I remember the day they moved them from this street up to here. And I was just a kid and it was six, eight grown men picking one of those speakers up and putting them out of his picture window and putting them in a truck and then bringing them up here and bringing them through that garage door. Wow, did he ever plug those things in while he was here? Absolutely. It was all functioning. Gosh, that, that, that would have been a great block party with those speakers. It could have been do you a great know, concert. <laughs> do you know the history of those speakers? Those no. Those You no. said that they were in some music halls or? Um, well, so Mike Malik mm -hmm. uh, said that he was dealing with sim similar equipment out on the post. Um, like even today, all still analog stuff that they actually purchased after digital stuff was out. So he's still out there Just messing a, with that stuff. So a purist. Yeah. That he is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. That's a great story, and yeah. it's it's an unfortunate happening that brought us to this. But absolutely, you but, can absolutely trust that uh, the equipment that we're taking back to Salina is going to be in, in good hands. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice when they're going to get repurposed right. and reused and, and, and somebody else will get to enjoy them. Yeah, well that's great. You made me cry, 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 cry For the first time in my life, baby You made me cry, baby For the first time in my life You for forgiveness, come on home. Oh Lord,
Won't you please come on home Come on home, girl Come on home Oh, babe And hey, would you please Forgive me, darling Come on home, girl I'm a beggar you, baby To come on home Please like and subscribe for more audiophile content. I don't want to let you go. Would you please?